Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. Today's project is this beautiful pair of Allen Edmonds Navy Blue Shell Cordovan Cambridge model shoes. Now, the customer's complaint was that the right shoe does not have a toe counter. And as you wear it, it prematurely is putting pressure right on the baroguing pattern right there, and it's creasing and ultimately will affect it more than what this is doing to damage that toe area. But the problem is that the toe counter is put on when it's halfway assembled. And the only way we're gonna to get to the toe counter is we have to disassemble the whole shoe. Uh, basically remove the whole sole, the welt, the footbed, and then get into underneath the toe counter, make them a toe counter, and then reassemble everything back together and make it look like it was never touched. All right, let's get started. All right, welcome back to Shoe Repair 101. Now, these are beautiful shoes, man. I'm, you know, I feel bad that we got to take the whole shoe apart for that. But there's no other way. I don't know how in the world that, you know, I guess they say shit happens. You know, it is what it is. Luckily, we have his last, so we can make that toe counter exactly the same shape as the shoe. Courtesy of Alan Edmonds. And when we went to, um, a couple of weeks ago, we were at the Alan Edmonds factory. And they were giving these lasts away. So the customer picked the pair up. And um, and he sent them along with the shoe. So it's the same size as, as the shoe. 13, 13D. It's a big foot. It's a beautiful shoe. Along with the Navy here, I've got my Navy watch, well, my blue watch. I've got my Navy, my suede belt, and I've got my, whoa, my blue suede shoes. This is uh, Alden, Alden. I got it from uh, Alden Madison in New York. They're beautiful shoes. All right, so let's get started. Let's tear these up, and then we'll see what we can come up with once we tear it apart. Some of you are probably guessing why I'm wearing this, this apron instead of my other apron. You know, sometimes, well, this is a lot lighter than, than the other apron. And, and we're closed right now, so I don't have to have the answering the phone, the phone being on my chest. So sometimes I'll wear this one. It's a little lighter. All right. I hate taking it apart. Beautiful, beautiful, brand new shoes, man. You know, it's a shame. But it's unfortunate that we got to take the whole thing apart because you have to get to, you have to get to the point where you're, you're going to excess the toe area, you know? Because that's basically halfway through the assembly that, um, that the toe counter's put on. And then um, everything else gets assembled around it. So, anyway, it is what it is, my brother. It'll be all right. Once it gets done, they'll be happy. Just like that. Just like that. The welt is off the shoe. God, it breaks my heart, man. God. It's beautiful shoes, but man, just tearing that apart like that. Ah. Oh. Okay. That's going to take. Now, once we remove the stitching on here, we've got to remove these staples, these damn staples. Man, these, these staples are, I, I hate these staples. Look at them. They're everywhere. Here's one right here. You see how it turns back in? God, these are so annoying. Yeah, they're everywhere. All around the toe. All around the sides. You guys see that right there? Look. 
There they are. I gotta cut every one of them. Damn. Threaded staples. We have an early riser. His buddies are just waking up. All right, so we've got it apart. And I can't blame the manufacturer because there is a toe counter there. But I'm not sure what kind of toe counter this is because it sure hell ain't no support. Now these shoes usually tend to go through a steaming process, right? When whenever they're relasting, whenever they're lasting the shoe, they they steam it up, they heat it up, and that usually activates all the cement and all the glues that are underneath the leather, and then softens the shell so they can stretch it over the form. Okay, I mean, is it possible that this didn't? heat up enough to activate it so it can stiffen up i don't know that's a that's a good question i can't tell now the other one is pretty solid so i don't know what happened to the right shoe but now we're going to correct it all right let's continue This is called Celastic. Basically, it when you heat it, you can stretch it, you can mold it to whatever you want. Very cool product. Caught you, sucker. Oh, come on now. Can I get a third hand?
Now we're going to do the same on the other one. Well, everything except for the toe because the toe is okay on this one. We're going to remove the cork. We're going to remove the welt. And we'll put a new welt on, new cork. We're going to reuse the same shank. Shank is okay. Wooden shank. It's not bad. Well, probably got new shoes. The guy wore them maybe a couple of times. Well, this job was around $700, by the way. Yeah, I know, I know. Hey, man, he could have bought me a pair of shoes. <sighs> you guys are so clever with your comments sometimes. I'm sure. You could have also taken out your friends for dinner for $700, too. But do you see how it's irrelevant? <laughs> no, but on a serious note, These are going to be solid once they get done. And the customer will be very happy. That's what the bottom line is. Trying to make the customer happy. Now, could I use this cork? Could I reuse it? I don't want to reuse it. We'll just put new cork on there. Could I re reuse it? Yeah, I'm sure I could have reused it, but why? All right, let's take this welt off and we'll get... We'll get started on rewelting the shoe. Let's continue. Now, at this stage here, what I'd like to do before I sew the welt on, I put a piece of fabric down, like a canvas. This is just a, a blue jean. You can use any kind of material, something heavyweight, preferably. So what I do is I glue this inside here. This is a bit of an overkill, but why not do it when you have it, you know, undone, when you have the chance to do it. Alden, Alden does this. Let me show you. I'm working on one now. When we're re-welting it, we put this here. Now, what is, what is this? What's the, you know, what does this do, right? Whenever a shoe is worn, well, this is done. I don't think this shoe is going to get that worn out, right? Sometimes what happens is the gemming here comes loose from the footbed. When that happens, the size of the shoe changes and it gets to be too loose on the customer's foot. Now, this material here is bridging these two pieces together. When this is glued together, it's bridging them together. So even if the gemming comes loose, this will keep the shape of the shoe. Now, again, I don't think these are going to get that worn to a point where the gemming is coming loose from the footbed. But you know what? I'm not going to take a chance. It's just a little bit of an upgrade to the job. And therefore, just to double secure it, make sure that it's not going anywhere for a long, long time. So we'll glue this canvas in there and we'll start stitching the welt on. All right, let's continue. Voila. There she be. Okay, I think that's gonna solve the problem. This is the piece they put in. It's a nylon to cover up the toe pattern right there so you don't see it through the holes. So we want to make sure that is secured back on. I don't want anything loose at this toe here once I get done. This is nothing structural. I don't think anyway. It might help a little bit. It's mainly for blocking out the light so you don't see through, you don't see underneath the, the holes of the toes there.
So we're going to let this sit for a while until it dries nice and secure. Then we'll go ahead and pull pull the last out and, and um, start assembling the welt on there. Now I put the I put the nails right through the holes of the existing holes of the welt, so that's what's securing it on there. So it's not I didn't punct I didn't puncture more holes. You can't. I mean, where are you going to hide it then? This is not a, um, this is a flat welt. You know, flat welt is basically, you know, it, it comes to the edge of the sole like that. There's no, it's not a split welt where it covers all the, the, the details, sometimes messed up details that you can hide. All right, we're getting there. Let's continue. Nice. We are done with one re-welting. Cool. We're getting there. Let's continue. Now, when it comes to cork, there's a few types out there. You got your pre-cut sheets. They come in different thicknesses. You've got a huge sheet that comes in, which you can cut the shape to whatever you want. And then there's the third one, which is that paste. It looks like um, peanut butter. Manufacturers have those machines that get heated up 
and it squirts it out and then they flatten it down. Um, Potter and Son Trenton Heath have that heating iron that they they heat over the, the putty, the putty cork. It's kind of cool, right? Yeah, I like that too. But the idea is basically they're all the same. As long as it fills in the cavity, doesn't matter if you're using your pre-cut cork or the larger sheets or the paste. It's all filling the cavity. That's what it does. Now, yeah, it looks cool with the heating iron that goes over the cork. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's mainly for show, you know. But it's kind of cool. I like it too, like I said. I'm a fan of that myself. And then you just sand off the high spots. Ready to put your midsole on. All right, let's continue. These are our leather midsoles. These are 7 8 ounce. This is the manufacturer midsole, which is half the thickness, maybe three ounces. And we are going to sand this down a little bit because we don't want it too chunky. You could. I, I usually leave them thick, like on my floor shine rebuilds. Be nice and thick. It gives it nice support. Oh, maybe we'll leave it in there because the guy's a the guy's a big guy, the customer. All the support he can get. You got to be careful with that cork, right? Now, sometimes what happens is that even on new shoes, you can get like humps or lumps in that cork if you're not careful that's why i like to sand mine down to try to flatten the surface as best as i can not to leave any humps in there i had a pair brand new pair that i just could not wear because it was like stepping on it was like stepping on rocks <clears throat> so i had to take it apart and resole it because of the cork issue Sometimes you can hammer that down, right? You can hammer the cork, flatten it down, but it just wouldn't do it in this case. So I had to resole a brand new pair of shoes. It's all good. It was in good hands. <laughs> Let's continue. All right, so now this shoe is a bit large to fit the pre-cut JRs. So we're going to have to cut it from the big bend that we have here. Um, now... Even though it's a JR, some of the areas of the hide is going to be a bit soft, okay? Like right here on this side here. We mainly leave the edges for like heels and stuff like that, but we want to make sure that we get the most out of this dense leather so we can use it on especially these shoes. Now, usually, just got to make sure that you don't have any waste. Well, you're going to have a little bit of waste, but try to minimize the waste as much as less as possible. So, if we do it here, then this right here is very small. So, we'll save this piece right here for leather top lifts or combination top lifts, for example. So, nothing gets wasted. Everything gets used. These are the heel bases that are on most Allen Nesman shoes. This is the same manufacturer as, as you know, Allen Nesman buys from. This is fiberboard with a rubber top. If you look here, one side is higher than the other. This gives it arch support. So this is going to be on the left shoe here. See right there, that's higher. It gives it arch support, believe it or not, on that shoe, on that side of the shoe. 
and we're not going to we're not going to use these. We're going to use leather ones. These are leather top lifts. I'm sorry, leather heel bases. Same manufacturer, same way it's made. You see, it's higher on one end. So we're going to use leather on this one, not not with a fiberboard. Let's continue. Man, the sucker's thick. Broke a sweat just cutting that. We might cut through here to go to Panera. in the picture. It's a cool area here. They shut down this area here. Sometimes they'll do little music festivals. Salas over there. We got Koi Koi. Spectrum Cleaners. Yeah, we got Panera Bread. A couple of times a week, my morning ritual, I'll come in and get a sandwich for breakfast. Not too often, but sometimes. used to be all a parking lot all open fields before these guys moved in to build these buildings not too tall five stories sweet frog a couple other businesses there and back to the shop Right next door. Okay, let's go through the cubby hole again. I left some trash there. Uncool. This is my back park a lot. Tea comes before the coffee. It's a nice hot tea.
You all know what time it is. <laughs> all right. These are coming along pretty good, I would say. Good morning, Louie. Good morning, brother. How was your morning so far? Oh, pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. I have to feed the birds later. You, did, you know what? A couple of viewers said that same thing, so so we... Louie got some some bird food. bird food and put it out there, and sure enough, they're coming around. So thanks for the suggestion. Nice have a time. <laughs> All right. Now, can I sand the edges on the machine? Yes, I can. Most people do that. I don't do it that way. The reason that I do it a hand sanding is that because the edge right here has a little bit of a lip. That's what the trimmer left. That's why I use the trimmer to finish the edges and not sandpaper because if I use the machine to sand the edges, that little lip, that little edge is going to disappear and I don't want that. That's important. Well, it's not structurally. It's just visually you know that's i think that looks pretty cool like that just like what the manufacturer does so that's the reason i'm hand stitching i'm hand sanding the edges just to smooth it out that's all but most most uh most people when they resole they'll they'll sand the edges to make it smooth i mean i've done that too in the past but the majority of the time i i use the trimmer to finish the edges For people who know, they know. Back up, back up. Let's read this, like that.
All right, welcome back. We're done with another project. So I'm really happy the way that these turned out. Um, once we took it apart, it was obvious that the toe counter was a little bit soft and it didn't add any structural support. So by adding a new toe counter, that resolved the problem. Um, new flat welts, uh, new midsole, new JR soles, heels, that kind of gave the package a complete look and I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So if you like this content that you just saw, if you want to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up would be grateful. And then if you have any comments, please leave them at the bottom and we'll see you guys again on the next project. Take care.